Okay, friends, it's day two of the fur Ronde coverage here. I'm out on the trail uh, today, so we're trying something new this year. I'm out at the Ambassador Culvert, is what it's called here, the Alaska Native Medical Health Center. Thanks to Paul and his wife for getting me out here today, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> have teams coming here pretty soon. Uh, they're about a few minutes away, um, so if you're tracking on the radio, you know that there are some teams that are working their way on the trail, some faster than others. It was reverse start today. You can see people here from the Anchorage area are gathered along the trails, and they're also gathered along the bridges. You can see the ASDRA race officials in the orange vest. The Alaska Sled Dog Racing Association uh, is on the trail. You also have a member of our Anchorage Police Department right there helping out, uh, keeping an eye on things right there, and then you can see some public up top. So we're giving a little different trail footage is here. I also want to let you know this is what the mushers are experiencing out there. They're experiencing a light snow. <clears throat> it's carrying on here friends. The light snow is carrying on. You're, if you're just jumping on it's kale here at a new location. Uh, we're gonna have dog teams coming around that corner here pretty soon. This is an exciting part of the trail system. It's right near the Alaska Native Medical Center here right behind there and the trail comes over a bridge around a corner through the woods here and then the teams will run right by and they'll go through this tunnel. And this gives you an idea of what's going on here when we talk about the mental fortitude that the Rodney teams have to have. Uh, there's numerous areas on the trail that are just like this, where they uh, have obstacles of man-made uh, sizes and shapes of all sorts that they have to go ahead and, uh, and get us through. So here we go. We are uh, waiting on the, the hear the crowd. There's a bridge back there to your left that you can't quite see, but I can. And there's a crowd up there. When the first team comes, they will be uh, cheering them on. Then they'll be coming around this corner. So we're on the we are on the home stretch here of waiting for our day two trail shot. We're not going to cover Cordova today. We got that yesterday. There were some really neat moments there yesterday, and all those are on Facebook, which is rad. Uh, and they're also on YouTube. We like to move them over there. And then uh, Tyler got shots today on the Cordova downhill. So I'll be able to turn those into some reels and different images for you all. Uh, it'd be nice to have a crew of four or five out here. If you're interested in that, uh, let folks know. Um, it takes a whole team. And right now, in the last six years, it's just been me doing the field coverage. And uh, I've got Tyler helping this year. Max helped me last year. Those additional shots allow you to get additional looks at the team. So you can see the kids down there playing for Anchorage families. They come out here early. They get all set up. Uh, next weekend, they'll do the same for the Iditarod restart. And there's sledding going on. See that kid just sled down the hill there. <clears throat> A really fun day for families. The Fur Ronde represents so many things to us who live in Alaska. Um, it, it really represents uh, for us just a lot of return of light the days are longer now the sun is rising earlier 8 15 ish uh, it's setting later when the teams come through here i think they're about eight miles or so from the finish um, this is a, a a new spot for me but as you can tell you got your locals who have their favorite places they are literally everywhere <laughs> there's thousands of uh, locals and, and visitors who are on fourth ave today that was so cool to see the streets were just jam-packed but as the trail fans out for 25.68 miles, like it does, uh, people just over the years find their favorite spots and they get all set up and then the, the waiting game is on. So um, that's part of mushing is waiting on the teams, uh, thinking about your strategy. So if you come next year, book your rooms, get your flights all in order, get your gear all ready, make sure to pack for warm weather and cold weather, and um, and we'll go ahead and celebrate together this year the conditions are turning into being really good <clears throat> we didn't want it to be too warm of course we want the snow We'd rather have a snowy trail than a warm sunny day so there's uh, some folks meeting up there on the trail again the kids are out i wanted to get this started nice and early for you we'll be able to see all the teams come through they will be going by me and through that tunnel and then around, that's uh, called Ambassador Culvert for those of you who live in the area. And uh, it's really, 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 really neat to show you the complicated nature of the trail and how hard the trail crew has to work. They have to loop all around. Again, our Anchorage Police Department member there helping out. Thanks so much. And our race officials keeping an eye on everything. 
in the orange vests. It truly is a major organization here. Courtney's uh, up there in Tanana. Hey, Courtney. Uh, great to have you on the feed. And let's go ahead and uh, swing this around here. I'm going to go ahead and... There we go. Okay. So you're just looking for the first team, just like I am. They'd be coming around that corner. And, you know, the, we always ask the mushers how to go out there. And as you can imagine, they usually have some sort of story uh, because it is a city. It's uh, people doing city things, playing, sledding, hiking, biking, fat biking. People are fat biking on the sidewalks around here. Um, people are out there skiing. And, and, and so the mushers come across all sorts. That is the trail that folks are walking on right there. That's the official trail. So you can tell what's about to happen here when the first team comes down. Um, everybody's going to need to scoot out of the way, and the dogs will come flying by. And if there's a big gap between mushers, then folks will start playing in the trail again. It's uh, very much like that game on, game off. Uh, but, of course, we want people to come out and experience the dogs, get to see their sheer power. You got to see that at the start today. Again, reverse order start means that the slower team should be coming first. <clears throat> we had a, a great looking set of starts again today. A couple dogs were a little bit distracted on day two. Uh, that happens sometimes when the crowd gets bigger. Uh, Sean Constantine, the Wolski, went out first at bid number 13. Charlie Connor went out second at bid 12. Jess Moore, here we go. Let's see if we're going to get a team coming. And they're going to start clearing people out of the way. Yeah, We're starting to get close, aren't we? I'm trying to find out. Yeah, yeah exactly. Hopefully. Everybody's looking to find out. Yep, we're going to see teams here, Billy. I'm not standing here just to show you the snow. I'm standing here to film sled dogs. But um, there's two theories of live streaming. One, you wait until the teams are here and then you all miss it. Or two, you start the, the thread and people get to actually be patient like you would in real life here. So that's what we're doing. We're practicing being a crowd all together online. We are set up and we're moments away. And it'll be super exciting when it happens. And then we'll get to know uh, if we get some good clusters of teams trying to pass each other around these corners here or how this looks. Uh, all throughout the trail, there's decision points the mushers have to make. I know that Frank Haberman uh, was really classy yesterday. He left uh, bib number one, as you recall. And then he had already told Buddy, hey, look, I'm going to head down that trail uh, a bunch of miles, and I'm going to find a place to pull over so you can come by and have a nice clean pass. And I think that not only is that wise and keeps the dogs healthier, it's just classy, and it's the kind of uh, coordination that, that really does keep this to be a fun race. The teams will all pass through this tunnel right here. More officials are starting to show up, so that tells you what's going on here. We're getting closer to the actual moment. The two police officers are kind of coordinating right there. They, they keep an eye on the trail, make sure everything's, uh, there's no machines or that kind of, um, you know, type of activity on the trail. <laughs> I remember my first year here, I was trying to film and I was leaning in the trail just like a regular old looky-loo. So if you do come to a sled dog race, uh, keep in mind that these folks have trained uh, often many years to be here for this one three-day moment. And uh, so be respectful. Leave your dogs at home. Uh, if your kids are playing and all that, that's, that's great. That's fun. Just make sure everybody's paying attention. Uh, any minute now, teams are going to come blasting around this corner right at us. I'm about four feet off the trail so I can swing the camera into the tunnel. I want to give you this shot right here while we're swinging and then you're watching the team blast right through that tunnel. And it is snowing here friends so if nothing else you get to be it in comfort of your home whether you're live or on the replay but feel like you're in gorgeous Anchorage or Alaska February 24th. You're getting the beautiful snowfall. Here's how deep it is. We have one of our officers coming down to join the fun. So there you go another person James Wheeler he knows Mushing's about patience. Mushing's about being at the right place at the right time and then just hanging tight. That's what it's all about. James Wheeler has run this race many times. It's always good to see him on the, on the audience. <clears throat> I know the mushers from Europe all tune in when they can. Depending on their schedule, there's different races going on there in Norway and where Egil uh, has been competing lately. 
Uh, he's been in race mode, but he checks the feed. So previous champions watch this. Fans from all around the world watch this. And then new folks learn about mushing by coming on the feed and just understanding that when we say that we have a trail that goes all through Anchorage, it really does go all through Anchorage. And, uh, and people come out. I just love it. I love how the traditions are. And it gives us a sense of community. You know, the winters here are hard. Uh, Anchorage had 110 inches of snow in the very first part of the year. <clears throat> the city got all shut down and school was canceled. They had to go back to virtual learning. And so here you are now, end of February. The light's beautiful, getting nice snow. People are out and about celebrating. Fireworks tonight at 7.30. The parade today had the caribou in it, the reindeer. That's so cool. Baby Willa got to be the, the lead in the parade today. That was There's a marching band out there. and It's a few blocks away from Mushing, so you didn't quite see it all. But it's a 10-day multi-event festival. And again, thousands come from all over the world. Hey, Donnie says, can't get radio there. Thanks for the coverage, you bet. And the Vitello family, Mushing family from the East Coast. You're always welcome, all friends. Hey, Jennifer. Robert Earhart, good to have you online. There's another professional musher. Yeah, it takes a uh, it takes a whole community here. Uh, there's our friend from England saying it's 10:35 there. Yeah, you bet. Across the world, it's a different time zone. Right there soon will be our first team approaching Ambassador Culvert. So just sit tight, friends. It is going to be exciting. It always is. I'll work on zooming in on them for you to get you the shot. And look at that family down there. It has a big old tube. You can see down there, big old green tube. <laughs> Samuel says, thanks for the coverage. Hope you're not too cold. Oh, I appreciate that. I got all my layers on today. And it's about, I'd say it's about 25 degrees, friends. So um, cold enough to snow, which is what we want. Last week we had rain. Uh, not uncommon, though, for Anchorage. You know, we are right on the Cook Inlet. We are right on the water. And it's an El Nino year. And so you're going to have warmer there's our PD members right there. And I'll be able to kneel down and really get you that great shot. So I'm on one knee right now practicing how I'm going to stabilize this camera with the Samsung 24 to get you the best look. <coughs> and let's look at our clock here. It is time for teams to be coming around here, friends. It is 1.38 Alaska time. We started at 2.20, so it's a slower day today. You can tell that already. And generally speaking, fresh snow means slower trails for sled dogs. Hard pack trail means faster trail for sled dogs. Yesterday, Remy hit speeds that were too much for his control of the sled even. And so in the exclusive interview yesterday, he told us about how he lost a couple minutes even though he led the day by five minutes he lost a couple because he took a turn too fast so you can go too fast on those hard trail days it might be something you could pull off today but when the snow comes in like this and it keeps falling it definitely changes everything it changes the ability for your runners on the sled to move fast now different mushers were choosing different wax and don just asked will i be at heartbreak hill too no today uh the race marshal asked if i'd be out here uh, at a different location. So here comes our trail sweep. All right, friends, this is going to get cool. We got the trail sweep coming in. So we're giving you just a different look today. Look at that. That means Azra is on the move. There's a good sign. That means mushers are coming here shortly. So just sit tight. Here we go. Pretend like you're right here in real life. You don't have every single question answered, and you're just an excited fan who's wondering what's happening. And here you are, just like all these folks, on the edge of your seat, on the edge of your trail, just excited as can be. Butterflies, here comes the first team. Here it comes. Yes. All right. And then she's going to clear out of the way. There you go. First team is here. Let's see who it is. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that is Remy. Is it? No, who is that? Sorry. That's Bib 11. Holy, sorry, I get that was yesterday's. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Here we go. Let's see who that was. That was Jess. All right, good. Jess Moore. 
Coming in first. Okay, another team coming. Another team coming. We got it all figured out now. Remember, uh, reverse start order. So the bib you see today. Here we go. Another team zooming in, friends. This is it. They're starting to come now. That is Sean right there. So Jess was able to make up a couple positions. There's Sean team looking good. Go get him, Sean. Thank you. There he is. He's hunched over. Let's let, watch him through the tunnel. There you go. Nice clean run through the tunnel. Boom. Those lead dogs just stay focused. They also have a big turn down there. How neat is that? How neat is that? Great job. First two teams are through the Ambassador Culvert down here on day two of the 2024 for Rendezvous. So Jess has passed a couple different teams there to get from 11 past 13. So she started, you know, this is going to be cool. This is going to be really cool because I don't know exactly what the order is out there. <laughs> so we get to keep it. Right, so if you're doing the math at home, Sean started first. Jess started four minutes later. She has passed him, so she's on the move up. Hopefully that means that she's going to gain more time today and get in there even more. You can see there's a little bit of conversation happening down here. Not exactly sure that musher could be. You hope everybody has clean corners and clean things, but sometimes stuff happens. So, Okay, you can hear the crowd cheering. People wandering around, that's just part of it. This is what the dog teams have to deal with, is just sort of people, curious non-producers, sort of in the way. All right, Andrew Bond here from Salcha, right there, coming through. Andrew's team looking great. Let's see him in the tunnel. Boy, you can really tell it's coming down. Happy dog team, moving well. Andrea Bond there, look at, she's crouched way down, trying to reduce that drag. Also give her upper body a little bit of a break. Boy, oh boy. We are mushing Alaska style now, friends. There you go. And I've been that guy on the trail before with my tripod and things, so just remember when you're home, think about going to race, uh, just remember those mushers would love to see a good, clean, open trail ahead of them because their dogs have to deal with so many things. So we've had three teams come by. Jess Moore, Bib 11, then Sean, Bib 13, and now Andrea Bond, Bib 10. So that's the first three teams to come by Ambassador Culver here on day two of the Rondi. Beautiful conditions out there. This is Ambassador Culver, Mary. We're at the Alaska Native Health Center here. And it's just great to see that young generation. Speaking of young generation, I want to give a shout out. To all the Junior Iditarod mushers, uh, Junior Iditarod starts on day two of Rondi every year out at Kinnick Lake. Since I've become the official live announcer, I've only ever made it there once, and it was on a real panic situation where I had to leave home in Willow, drive to Kinnick, jump out, catch a few of the juniors, jump in the truck, drive all the way to Anchorage, get down to fourth, and it just makes it hectic. So for safety reasons, I can't cover Junior Iditarod, but they started this morning. They have a full pool of mushers, uh, and its future is bright. I've been getting messages on my phone here about the excitement there in Kinnick. We at the Alaska Dog Center, we support that race with prizes and gifts. So do other businesses. We want to see the junior mushers strong. That's one of the reasons why live streaming is so important, because their generation is tech savvy. They tune right in, and they know how to fast forward to the good stuff. So. Congrats to Junior Iditarod. They're on a 100-mile run right now. If Emily Robinson pulls off her third in a row, then she'll tie Timmy Osmar down in the Kenai, who did that about three decades ago or so. So we're thinking about Emily Robinson, her family, and all the junior mushers. It's a big event for them. <clears throat> Meanwhile, we're waiting on the fourth team to come by Ambassador Culvert here. So there's a little flurry there. We're still waiting. We haven't seen any teams in our top five yet so there hasn't been any super epic passing in terms of like uh, <laughs> you know maybe leapfrogging all the way to the front that would be a lot to ask anyway but you can see that crowd down there and lynn whipple so good to have you here from montrose lynn's uh, part of my original mushing family there 
and her and her partner uh, took such good care of Buddy, uh, sorry, Poppy and and um, oh, Quinny. And here we go. Okay, another team coming. I'm, I, we have two teams. This is the moment. Share the feed, friends. It's about to get real here. The chase is on. Remember, chase is always exciting for that second team because they want to go. That's Marvin Cochran up first. Team's looking good. Marvin Cochran looking good. And then look at that, Charlie Connor on his runners there, trying to stay in it. Yeah, kicking. He's the guy who's always firing up the face. Look at that, two teams through the Ambassador Culvert here at the Alaska Native Health Center. So rad, great job. Marvin Cochran moving today. He has more Rondies under his belt than anybody in this field by a lot. Really good to see him have a nice run. Let's go over here. All right. And there's 25 miles of trail here in the city. And you're getting a look at what it looks like. <laughs> I love your comments, but uh, there's also reality here. <laughs> 25 miles, friends. That's what I learned 11 years ago when I covered this race the first time. 2013, I came down from Fairbanks and I'd never been to the Fur Ronde and I didn't even know where to go. And you can jump on trails all over the place and just be there. And so there's a lot of honor system here to keep it all together, but that's why the mushers will always say that every day is a new day, every turn's a new turn. You never know what's coming around the corner. And that's why mushers like Arlie Reynolds, who won years ago, got to a winning team because he built distractions into his dog yard in Salcha. He put speakers for music so the dogs could listen to radio all the time and get used to sounds. He put culverts and scarecrows with clothes hanging over the trails. So they'd have to have gloves and hats and different things draped over, hit them. And then his dog team became super, super focused and they could run through any distraction and they became champions. But it took a couple decades to pull that off. This shot here gives you a reason why. Oh, we got teams again, friends. There's one coming around the corner there. Mushers tucked over the bars, I can see it. Here comes the team. Wow, you can hear all the talking going on. That is Andy Hewton right there, our good friend from Nanana. There's Andy and his team going right through Ambassador Culvert. Looking good. You hear him calling some commands out there. Remember, dogs are voice command driven or mind thought. Don't forget about Sixth Sense, but they also do get trained up to hear voice. Never want to take away any dog's superpower there. Right on. It's a really exciting right now, friends. That was Andy Hewton looking good. Bib number six. We should start to see some of those top bibs here soon then. Whoever made up time today. Remember, day two is a move up. If you're in a lower position, you got to start moving up. <clears throat> but, of course, much easier said than done. There's so much uh, statistical information at this race about how Things can go south quickly. <laughs> it's happened to many over the years. I see another team coming around the corner. This is so great. Clinton just asked where I'm at. I'm at the Alaska Native Health Center here at Ambassador Culvert at a new spot. Our race marshal asked if I'd get to a new spot uh, for Saturday. And so here we are. Tomorrow I'll be at, at uh, Cordova. That looks like Annie Mallow to me. That is Annie Mallow, friends. She is moving. Look at that dog team. They are moving. That's Annie Mallow right there from Quebec, friends. Beautiful shot of her team. I'm trying to swing that camera out even farther. So you can see that corner as well. Boom, there they go. All right, bib number three is through the culvert. Okay, more teams coming. Oh, boy. <laughs> You can see everybody cheering there. There's clapping going on. Oh boy. Is there anything as beautiful as a group of happy dogs? Look at them. That is Jake Robinson, friends. He's doing it. Jake in the house. He is moving today. 
There's this string of dogs going through the tunnel. We'll swing back to another team right here. Oh boy, here he is. There is Remy Coast right now. Team one has passed Bud. Oh no, sorry, that's seven. That's Tetzner. I misread the bib. There's Tetzner. He's cruising. Okay, okay. Scratch that. He that's Tetzner. That makes more sense. There you go. Michael Tetzner, bib seven. Oh boy. We're gonna have something happen up here though. I can assure you it's that kind of day. Okay, that was exciting. Jake Robinson, bib five, looking strong. Michael Tetzner, bib seven. His team's looking a little tired. But he's right in there. He's chased down bib five. That's a four minute gap if you're doing the math, right? Two minute intervals. And I know that people at home have all the time in the world to do all the math all there, but for quick math folks, two minutes each bib, you can figure out who caught up to who. So when you see bib seven right behind bib five, and five caught up to seven, right? And there's that family's down there. I know. Come on, buddy. Come on, Remy. We've already had Annie through. If Buddy gets his big win today or catches up and gets in position for tomorrow, it's going to be one of the most dramatic Sundays of all time. Because George Atlas' record that stood for all these years, his rookie year was 1948. It stood all these years. He has 10 wins. And if Buddy can get another win... And he will break that record, and that record might never be broken again until a whole other dynasty of mushers comes along because it it's just, do the math. How do you even win 10 rondies? That in and of itself is incredible. But he's already done that. It's taken many, many years, many chapters, many journeys, many books and movies can be made about it. Here comes a team. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, they're cheering down there. Let's see who it is. That does look like somebody kicking along. Okay, I was right after all. That is, Mr. You can tell by the kick. You can tell by the kick who that is. That's Remy Coast. Okay, huh. Look at him. He is just on the move, friends. I will also say that that means Annie Mello had a great day because Buddy's been passed. When bib number one comes by before bib number two, in a reverse order, that means bib number two is passed. So Annie is having one heck of a day, friends, and you saw it here in real time what that looks like. More teams coming. That might be the Canadian Express right there. Let's see. He's kicking two. Sled bag is collapsed. That is Buddy. So it's on, friends. The battle is on. Remy Coast with a dominant lead today so far. There's Bud. His sled bag is down. He means business. There he is. Hats off. Go get him, buddy. There he is. He's kicking. He's not letting up. This is one heck of a race, friends. Look at that. Look at that. He has collapsed his bag to be more streamlined. His team is running, and they are now chasing. They have been passed. Uh, Costa, Costa had one dog in the sled, it looks like, but boy... You can tell when his team is coming down the trail because you will see a high kicking leg. He is athletic. He wears a race suit. And he is here to be involved with his team every single step of the way. That's a style that I saw in Europe quite a bit. I've seen it a few times in the North American tours that I've been on. been traveling the world for eight years. Following Sled Dog Sports. And this is exciting as it gets. But keep an eye on Annie's time because she was screaming through here a long time ago, it seems now. I've been on my knees in the snow here. I can tell that they're gaining a little bit of cold. So good on you, Annie. Here's another team coming. People are cheering. That looks like Greg Taylor. He wears that blue. There it is, Greg Taylor. Fairbanks, Alaska. I know his family's watching right now. There they are. Beautiful looking huskies. Greg all relaxed. He's just holding steady there. You can see the difference. Remy comes through kicking. Buddy comes through kicking. Greg's good with the pace that they're at right now. Remember, not every team's trying to go the same pace. That's not what this race is about. This is about your team and what it can do and not other people's teams. You start racing somebody else's race, 
and the Rondi will show you something else. And it's usually not that good. Usually your team slows down. So in the Rondi, going out in the first 10 to 12 miles, even a mile per hour or half or a little bit more than that too fast can cost major time at the end of this race. But we've seen our top three come through already in here. We've seen uh, Jake Robinson come through now. So our top five has come through, our top six. Yeah, we're just about there. We're, we're getting pretty close to having all the teams through here. We're still waiting on Frank Haberman. I think that's who we're waiting on. We're waiting on Frank because we've already had Sean Constantine, Charlie Connor, Jess Moore, Andrea Bond, Marvin Cochran, Andy Hewton, Jake Robinson, Greg Taylor, Annie Mallow, Buddy Streeper, Remy Coast. So we are just waiting on Frank to come through now. And that should be all the teams here at this really neat location, giving you a different look at Alaska, a different look at the trail. Different look at the mushers and dogs. They don't expect me to be here. They know I'm going to be on Cordova most years, and that's such an intense experience anyway. But they didn't know I was going to be here, so I surprised them. You saw Buddy had his sled bag collapsed and even took his hat off. He's kicking as hard as I think he is trying to keep up with Remy that he's, he's going to be sweating. <laughs> if Remy can go into Sunday with an even bigger lead and just keep a consistent race on Sunday, you never know what could happen. There's our race officials again, doing a great job. I believe we're just waiting on Frank. When I talked to him yesterday, he mentioned he had some old dogs on his team that ran well, but he's always keeping an eye on them. He has a smaller kennel, owner operator. But wow, that was exciting. Thanks, Deborah. It's so neat to have you all here. A little different look. Of course, mushing takes patience. <laughs> but also the, so does raising puppies and training them to be warriors and champions. I think we're just waiting on Frank Haberman, right? Yeah, he's the last one. But, and we can go back downtown and probably catch most of them. Okay, we're going to jump out of here, friends. Let's say hi. 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 Thanks for getting me out here. Do you want to introduce yourself and say hi to everybody? Jane Heisel. I'm a fan also. Hi to everyone. And this spot was pretty exciting, right? Yeah, it's a great spot. Wasn't that cool seeing yeah. them all come People around? People in the know. You got the local take. <laughs> okay, friends, we're going to try to get downtown. We'll see you soon.